Hello and welcome back to the Spectrum Art Academy. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to mix the primary colours, that is red, yellow and blue, to mix the secondary colours purple, orange and green. I'm going to be using acrylic paint as this is a particularly vibrant media but you can use anything, you can use watercolours, poster paints, it's up to you. If you haven't seen the clip on colour theory that is part of this series entitled Colour Theory in the playlist, the link will be appearing about now and I suggest you watch this either before or after the tutorial to get a clear understanding of how you can use the colour wheel in your work. So let's get on with the tutorial. <clears throat> So now we're going to move on to painting our colour wheel. First we need to draw it, so we're going to need some equipment, but we're going to be focusing on colour mixing skills, looking at primary and secondary colours. As mentioned earlier, if you haven't had a chance to watch the colour theory clip in the colour theory playlist, click below to see how you can use the colour wheel in your work and all about the different colour groups. For those of you that are homeschooling, you may want to check out the introduction to art in, the, in that playlist. Um, as there are lots of key curriculum lessons, we look at shading, we look at drawing. But so for this, you're going to need a ruler, a compass, a rubber, a pencil, and a project projector. You may want to have a look in the key equipment list for all of the resources that you will need. So for this, you will need to measure 10 centimeters on your ruler and use your compass to draw your circle to fit the whole page. So put your, your compass in the center of the page and then your circle should fill the whole page. Try and have it so that it's central. And then you will need to grab your ruler because for the next stage, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line down the center of your circle. Now, when you're draw drawing all of these lines, what I would suggest you do is use your pencil really lightly. What I didn't mention at the beginning is for this task, I would be using a HB because that pencil does rub out fairly neatly. So no digging in with your pencil just in case you make a mistake. So grab your ruler, make sure you draw a nice neat line down the center of your circle. And then take your protractor, place it on the line and make a measurement of 60 degrees on one side of your line and 60 degrees on the other side of your line. And then draw a line to join both of those marks. And then put your protractor on that line and then make two additional marks of 60 degrees because each of these segments should be 60 degrees because those of you that are really good at maths will know that for a circle you need to divide well, we've got a, a circle should be 60 degrees and then because we've got six segments we're dividing that by six which makes each of these segments 60. So we're going to join that up really neatly drawing our line really lightly so if we make a mistake we can rub it out and there you are there's your colour wheel. Now the reason I don't like these printed out is because people have different printers and if I was to give you one that was pre-printed, you would print it out and then you may find that when you start painting, it all gets messed up, the ink comes off. So let's talk about the painting equipment. So as mentioned earlier, I'm using acrylic paints, but you can use any paints you like. You can use water-based paints. But if you are using acrylic paints, just remember that it dries really quickly. So you have to work quickly. And if you are using acrylics, I would suggest you get an old shirt or an apron we have a recommended one in the description below or the, the key equipment list. Those of you that are, so this is especially for those of you that are homeschooling, um, I would suggest you've got an apron for all of the painting tasks. Now, 
you need your, your primary colours for this activity. So you're going to need red, yellow and blue. But for the colour mixing that I do, I like to use two yellows, two reds and two blues. And this will all become clear later. doesn't matter which one you put for the first stage. Um, so we'll talk about it in more detail. But you may want to, if you're preparing for the lesson, get cadmium red and a crimson, cadmium yellow and lemon yellow and ultramarine and thalo blue and thalo blue is with a p um, and as i say we'll explain why later you will also need a palette um, and that can be anything that can be an old plate an old plastic lid um, this one is an old piece of perspex or some people call it acrylic which is very confusing um, and i just had that lying around which makes a very nice palette um, and again, I've got some um, in the descriptions below um, recommended, but for acrylic, I would certainly be using a flat palette. For watercolours, we use the ones that have got little dimples in them because it holds the water. Again, we have the equipment list if you want to have a look for those. And also for your brushes, we've got a very good set that has watercolour and acrylic brushes. For this task, um, you will also need um, a jar of water and some paper towel to clean your brush. Now, for the actual painting, I would be using a size four, you might want to use one a bit smaller for painting the details, painting those lines, because you want them to be neat and tidy. So I'm now using a four, and then when you move on to filling the gaps in, in the center of each of those segments, you might want to move on to an eight or a six until you've got your confidence because then you can fill up with more time saving. You don't have to take, you know, be taking ages. Take your time with painting around the edges and then when you are going into the center, you can just apply your paint a lot quicker. The primary colors, when we're gonna be painting them, just take a note of where they are on the color wheel it's very important that we put them in the right place and we don't put red next to yellow, for example. And as I say, if you haven't watched that colour theory clip, have a look and you'll understand why. And the reason for that is that the red and the yellow go on the other either side of orange because red and yellow make orange. Red and blue go on either side of purple because they make purple. It's really important you have an understanding of that. And when it comes to complementary colours, and those are colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel, they should always go opposite each other on the colour wheel. So please make sure that you are paying attention to that. Don't just quit because a lot of people when they're painting a colour wheel are so eager to get the paint onto the paper. They're really excited because very often we don't get to paint that often. So um, make sure you take your time and paint your colours in the right order. Now. Please make sure that you are taking your time. Don't rush this activity. I will speed this up until the end, but just take your time. We're not in a rush. We want this to be really, really neat. So there you have it, your first segment, lovely, bright, vibrant red. So now it's time to go and clean your water and your brushes. For the next segment, which is yellow, so it's really important that they're clean because if not, it will turn into orange. So now we're going to move on to yellow with our clean brushes and our clean water. Um, I'm going to start with a number four brush, then move on to number eight to fill in the larger areas. Please make sure that you take your time around the edges. And as mentioned earlier, use your number eight brush to fill in the larger areas. Um, this is one, another one of your primary colours. I'm going to do a quick fast forward so that we can move on to the next stage.
So now we're moving on to our last primary colour blue, only after we've washed our water and brushes of course, because if we had left any yellow on those, it would turn into green. Obviously take your time painting the edges with a number two or four brush, and then you can fill the rest of it in with your larger brush. You may need to do a second layer because with the darker colours, you may see brush strokes. Okay, have fun. Now you have painted your primary colours, you're now in the position to start mixing your secondary colours. Now this is where we need to start discussing different types of yellows, reds and blues. And if you have all of these colours, the, the three primaries in colds and the three primaries in warms, you will be able to mix any colour as long as you have black and white. So here are the two different types of yellow. You've got warm yellow which is cadmium and cold yellow which is lemon yellow. We're going to start with cadmium yellow and that is for mixing the orange and then you can use the cold yellow for mixing green. And here are your two reds. We've got cadmium red and crimson. Cadmium red is the one that we will use for orange because that is a warm red. So moving on to our secondary colours, starting with a cadmium yellow, warm yellow and adding a tiny amount of cadmium red to make this bright, vibrant orange. When mixing, you must remember to start with the main light colour and then add a tiny amount of the dark colour at a time. If you start with your darkest colour, you will find that you are adding a significant amount of the light colour. So start with your lightest colour first. So in this case, we're starting with yellow, adding a tiny amount of our cadmium red to that cadmium yellow to get a really bright, vibrant orange. As you can see, it's going to be lovely just mixing the last bit in and also make sure it's completely mixed don't just mix it in the middle it's got to be really really mixed really smooth all throughout try to make sure it's all done even to the edges before you start painting because then if you rub out you'll be going to the edges and it won't be evenly mixed if we were starting with a cold yellow we'd have an orange but it wouldn't be as vibrant and as warm as this orange make sure that you are painting in the center with a larger brush. So I mixed with this larger brush. So I'm just going to go to the center and then I'll mix around it. Oh, I'll go around the edges with a smaller brush. Also a tip, if you are left-handed, paint from the right-hand side. And then if you're right-handed, paint from the left-hand side, just to make sure that you don't catch any paint on your hands.
So now we're going to mix green, that's going to go between the yellow and the blue because we're going to use yellow and blue to mix our colours. And we're going to start with our yellow. We need to make sure that we're using lemon yellow, which is a cold yellow, and phthalo blue, which is a cold blue. You can use other yellows and blues, but this means that we'll get a truly cold green. And because yellow green is a cold colour, we want to be using our cold tones, our cold colours to start off with. So we're going to start with yellow and we're going to add a tiny, tiny amount of the phthalo blue to our yellow because if you remember, you start with your lightest colour first and then you add a tiny amount of that to your lightest colour to achieve the colour that you want. And if it's not right, that doesn't matter. You can still continue to add that colour until you get the right tone. So let's just take a small brush and add a tiny, tiny amount to that yellow, that cold yellow, that lemon yellow, until we get the right colour. Now when you see it mix, you will see what a fantastic shade of green you get. It's like a bright, almost fluorescent green. Whereas if we'd been using the warm yellow and the warm blue, it wouldn't be quite the same. It wouldn't quite be as bright. So that's why it's really important that you use the right colour for the right try tr the mix that you want to get because if you start with warm yellow for a cold colour you're not going to achieve the same results. Now we're going to move on to the last part of our colour wheel, which is purple. So we're going to be using a cold red, which is crimson, and a cold blue, which is phthalo blue. Any cold red or cold blue which will be fine, but out of all the colours in the colour wheel, purple is the most difficult to achieve. And that's why it's really important that you use the cold red and the cold blue. Now, if you were mixing your colour and it came up like the purple that I'm using, if you wanted it to look a bit more purpley, you could add a tiny amount of white, but I just wanted to give you a, a real colour wheel experience. And very often when I'm teaching students, um, I always say to them that I would much rather the, that you experiment with your colours and experiment with colour mixing rather than having perfect colours and not having that experimentation and getting them straight from the pot and as I've said to you as long as you have those cold primaries and those warm primaries and black and white you can mix absolutely any colour that you like. Um, so let's go. <clears throat> Thank you. 
So here's your lovely colour wheel with your primary and secondary colours. Don't forget, if you would like to display your artwork, including your colour wheel, please send it to hashtag Spectrum Art Academy so it can be displayed on the Instagram page. Um, also, don't forget to look at the colour theory playlist where you'll find the clip um, that shows you how you can use colour theory in your artwork. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can see more content in the coming weeks.